Okay, this is Code Forces around 7.12. Uh, yeah, it starts in about 12 seconds. Uh, it is a Div 1, so that's gonna be interesting. Yeah, uh, good luck. Sequence of brackets is called balanced if it one turning it into a valid math expression. If well one if one can turn it. Oh okay. So you're given binary string, construct two bracket sequences A and B of length N such that for all this. Wait, what? If S is equal to one then the digits built then the characters are equal. And do both of them have to be bracket sequences? They do. Huh. So if S is equal to one, then AI is equal to BI. Well, we know that the first character always has to be <coughs> an open bracket sequence, no matter what. So if the first character is one, then it's impossible. So we can match them like this. I think we can just do it at like a greedy. And then if it's like valid, it's both. If both of them are valid at the end, then it's valid. Let's try that. Uh, do I need you to read Ray? I don't. It's fine. I'll do int n. So we have, wait, so S equals one means they have to be the same. S equals zero means they have to be different. Okay, so this is one, zero, one, one, zero, one. I wonder if that's true or not. Is it always valid if the sequence is valid? Because if this is this, then like that can end up as two opening things. Okay. different. So if this is zero, then it's always no, otherwise we try to find the answer.
Okay, well, the interesting thing is that if we have like a block of characters that have that are like different at some point, then we could probably draw a block like that. <clears throat> because if the characters are the same, they're going to be different. If they're different over there, then the same up here. So we can interchange them. There is no solution. Why is there no solution? What if we do this? If we do this, then it's these have to match. And these have to be different. Okay, because it goes outwards like this. Um Do they have to be equal? They don't. Because if they're all zeros and it'll work. One, two, three, four, five, six. No, I don't think that has an effect on anything. So we have like a one and then a zero. If we had something like this, this would turn into this. If we had a zero and then one, something like this would turn into this. So wait, does that have something to do with the number of ones? Is Okay, zero one pair, one zero pair, zero one pair, one zero pair. One zero zero one, one zero zero one, one zero zero one. Okay. Maybe. How would we do one zero one? We would I mean it's a first digit meaning it has to be this. But then it's like one zero, it means having more this than this. But if it's one one, then the number of things that happen still stay the same. So, and then zero, if we draw this, then this will get flipped. And we can draw this to stay the same, drawing this will stay the same. Okay, I think that's the condition that we need. I believe this is the condition we need. So. doesn't equal then count that. Let's find out by the first number. Um, no, if they're equal then there's always a solution. Otherwise, no, there's never a solution. we know the character starts with a 1, we can guarantee that 1, 0 occurrences come before 0, 1 occurrences. Okay, let's try this. Oh wait, hold on. No, um, that doesn't work. Because then it's like this and this. No matter what, it has to be like this. But if we do something like this, then that's impossible as well. this. We 
can't do that, so we have to do this. Okay, I see. Oh, uh, I'm gonna read problem B, just to see if it's like somehow easier or not. Oh, it's interactive, okay. Um, interesting, interesting. <laughs> Three coloring. What about problem C? I'll just look over all the problems super quickly. Okay. Obviously, if they start with a zero, then it can't work. It can only work if... Well, that pair of... Okay, what if we just fixed it as this? One zero zero one one zero. One zero zero one one zero. One one zero one. Okay, then this flips this way, this flips this way, this flips this way, this flips this way. Um <coughs> this is this way, this is this way, that's this way, this is this way. Is this a valid sequence? It is. Will this always work? Is there a proof behind this? Or do we just try it? Proof by AC? Oh, okay, I guess the problem... Because if you take a valid bracket sequence... Because it's good, because all this does... Well, ideally, all you want these operations to do is change the delta of the sequence. Do I think this is going to work? Is this going to work? I don't know if this is going to work or not. Hmm. Because if we draw a sequence from here to here, okay, so if we start it off with all ones and we have something like this, we could change okay, then some arrangement that could, that looks like it could potentially work, but it doesn't for this would look something like 110. No, but that doesn't work. 0011 obviously doesn't work. 100. Zero, zero. There has to be an even number of zeros, is what I'm getting at here. The zeros can't be all one. It can it can't be one zero one zero because then it'd be like one 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 one. But is there there has to be a valid way to do that though, right? Then it's like this zero. No, but then it shifts that way. You know what? I'm just gonna try it. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. It's fine. Um
equal to um, I know res. Okay, so if array of i is equal to one, then res two of i is going to be two. Then they match. the strings itself, yeah. Just submit this and see if it works. I feel there's like this is just so guess horses, it's not even funny. Um, yeah, okay, that's what I expected. Wrong answer. Um, now the question is what is the way to do this? I feel like <clears throat> once I realize it, it's like gonna be immediately obvious. a case in which it works but it but my way says it doesn't maybe this can it end in a zero it cannot end in a zero okay because if it ends in a zero then one of them is guaranteed to be an opening bracket Interesting. Is that? <laughs> there's an, that's not the only condition, is it? That can't be. No, because one zero one one doesn't work. it's not possible. Okay. So if it's a one and then a zero, then our choice doesn't really matter. just construct the sequence and we always want to increase the balance of the lower one that might be it I could see how that works let's try that yeah
<clears throat> you always want to increase the valve. Five can be two. Okay, well, I mean, oh, shoot, that's not right. <sighs> okay, so if we have some prefix of ones and then it hits zero for the first time. It has to hit a zero at an odd position in order for it to fix itself. And obviously it has to end in one, two, three. Well, like in a different parity of a position. So like one, zero, zero, one should work. Yeah. Um, how many pairs, okay, this is we hit two, we hit two. Interesting. <clears throat> we saw something like one zero 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 one work. If we have this and then this. I guess if it's something like this, then it will turn into that. And then if we have something like this, it's going to turn to that. Okay, so this as a sequence will be okay. But in here, it's like... It's still okay. Um... Weird. <clears throat> um, let's see. For a sequence that works. This and then this. Um, if balance, if a balance is equal to that. Look at problem B. There's an n by n grid. Are we given the colors? We're not. Each turn begins with Alice naming one of the three colors. Let's call it A. Place a token B. We think there's a conflict if mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have a game as Bob and Win. Okay. Uses the color B not equal to A. He places a token of color B on that cell. Can we choose what where what cell we put it on?
Yes, we can. Okay. There's a conflict. And there's only three colors. A conflict occurs when... That happens. So no, no matter what colors we get, we always... Okay, well, we can we checkerboard it? Where if we get a two, we always put it on some position there. Because, okay, if Alice says two, then we have to pick an odd number. But if Alice says an odd number, then we can choose either an odd or an even number. Um, but if she always says an odd number, Pick a color that's not what Alice said. <laughs> what if we can we always force it so that there's either even or odd numbers on here? But he can play in such a way that he never says an odd number. Wait a minute, so if there's this cell over here, okay, I guess one way to rephrase this problem is that you're given <coughs> a bunch of integers, but the problem is that you don't, that you want to adapt it. Bob puts a token. I see. Okay, so if we get all twos, then it could be a problem. Because if we get like a two in here, then this has to be an odd number, and then like an odd number, odd number, odd number, odd number odd number. But I mean, if these all end up giving odd, then we can just put even numbers in there and it'll work. But if there's also a problem if they give an even number. Wait, okay. Maybe we can do it like this. So it's like A, B, 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 A, 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 B. Then is it always possible? No, because then the only color we could put on there is C. And if, they, and if Alice blocks C, then we're in a bad spot. What if instead we do... Um, Okay, so if he chooses a color two, no matter what, okay, is there a restriction on what kind of colors Alice can block? No. So for a final move, okay, maybe we should think about it in like a final move. In any final move, um, it has to be, 
whatever is like the last cell that you put, it has to, all of his neighbors have to be the same color. So if it was a grid like this, all of its neighbors would have to be the same color. So this would have to be A and A. If we thought about it diagonally, all of these neighbors have to be the same color. Okay, so if we did like, let's say we weren't allowed to use color two, so we like just put a one here. This is any arbitrary color. This is any arbitrary color such that it doesn't work. So let's say if we put a three over here, but then what if they block a three? Then that's a problem. Is it now? Wait. Maybe we just put these as any block of colors. So if it's like three and two, I mean, they could block one. Right. If they block one on this cell, then we're, then we're screwed. So the diagonals have to, do they have to stay the same? I mean, if a color isn't assigned a color yet, then I guess it's fine. So if it's like one, uh, okay, so one, two, one, three is blocked. So if it's like one, Okay, well, color two was blocked. <laughs> what if we think about them as diagonals? So it's like if color, okay, so color of this is not blocked and color of this, and it's like A, B. If they block A, then we can just turn this into a C. If put all twos, I mean, if, okay, what if we can never get a two? Then they could block it to at some point because then we have ones and threes alternating. Okay, so what if it so if we think about it as a as a BFS? Maybe it's like we have a grid. a grid. This is A. I mean, these have to be the same, which means that, I mean, this could either be an A or a C. Oh, because then it's like, whatever nobody put here, it could block it over here. So let's say we put down some random number here. If I block this, then we can put another, then we put any number that's not equal to this one here. That's valid. If they block A, then we can just put B. If they block B, then we can put an A over here. If they keep on blocking B, then that means A isn't blocked, which means we can put an A over here. And then once A is blocked, we can just put B's over here. Wait a minute, so... If this color isn't blocked, then one of these other colors is blocked. And if we ever get... An, and if we ever get a surplus... 
Okay, and then if A is blocked, then we want to put a B over here. That way, whenever B gets blocked, we can put an A over here. And then if B is blocked, then hmm. Okay, if B is blocked, then we put an A over here. That way, it's like, okay, let's say B is blocked for all of these moves. Then we put A's all over the board like this. Um, that might work. So, okay, in a 5x5 five five grid, let me get some... Scratch paper. Okay, so let's say we're allowed to use two or three. Okay, so we're not allowed to use two. What if they ban one number the entire time? I mean, well, it doesn't matter. We just like, it doesn't have to be two and three, they just have to be different. So it's like, there's an A and then a B over here. And we can guarantee these two to be different. And then we just care about whether they blocked A at a spot or B at a spot. If they blocked B, then we want to build on A's. If they blocked um, B's, if they blocked B's, then we want to build on B's. And then let's say, like, we don't, all the A's, they've blocked B the entire time, so we've made A the entire time. Then we just need to make sure um, these values aren't A, and then we're good. Yeah, okay. Um, let me do B really quickly. So is the only input N? It is. Okay. Um, let's see. So this may be my grid, and then the grid size is at least two, so there's going to be at most four queries, or at least four queries. Um, so int x is equal to query, what do we have to print? Oh, you know, we begin a turn by reading an integer. Okay, okay, interesting. Um, Well, R is 
equal to zero or less than n. Okay, r plus c is not equal to zero, and r does not equal to zero. And Okay, so as long as it's not zero and it does not equal to zero or c does not equal to one. Because if it's equal to zero, zero or zero, one, then we've already processed it. Mod two is equal to zero. Okay, so bang is equal to this. Okay, well if band is equal to even, then wait, okay, if band does not So if, okay, so if the digit we banned is not equal to this, then it's equal to that. Okay, so if band was, okay, if band was equal to even, add, so, um, set odd value exists. So if an odd value exists, then hmm. okay. So if odds that size is greater than zero, odds dot pole c equals odds dot pole. So greater r and c is going to be equal to. Choose an even one. We want to set to a third color. So int um, color is equal to six minus even minus odd. Int r is equal to even stop pole. Int c is equal to even stop pole. Grid at r and c is equal to color. Wait, no, if band is not equal to odd, otherwise, set odd value. So set even if it exists. And something very similar over here. 
So if evens.size is greater than zero, then we want to get an even value. Even, even. Otherwise we set it and you get it from odds. Oh, where do we have an issue? Okay, if band is not equal to one, then we do one, otherwise it's two. I'm just gonna submit this, see if it works. Still not sure how to do problem A, um, that, but that is okay. Wrong answer? Really? Are we outputting everything right? Yeah, we are. That's weird. What if we had, like, say, a 4x4 four four grid? I always band 1. Give me 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So two, one, one. Wait, so, oh, okay, so this becomes a color of two. Wait, what if I ban three and color this at one, okay? What if I ban one and we color two at one, three? Wait, two at row one, column three, okay. And then I, what if I then band two? What if I band two? Okay, I'm going to band one a bunch of times. So one, it's going to become two at two, two. Okay, and then if I band one again, it becomes two at two, four. Band one again, two at three, one. And then band one again, it should be two at three, three. And then if you put three a bunch of times, it becomes one at two, one. It's just going to fill in these with one. And then I do, like, say, color two again. And it's like one at two, three. They band color one, two and four, two. And if I band color one, it becomes two at four, four. Now what if I band color one again? Then we start using threes. So three at three, two. And we want to just fill it in. Oh, wait a minute. It's band minus odd. Oh, right, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's not, yeah, this color that we're choosing isn't necessarily this, so. We're putting it at an even place, so we can never have it as an odd number. Um, so 6 minus even minus odd, if coal is equal to ban, then you want the change of color into the, just the even color. Um, and so if this happens to be equal to ban, we want to set it to the odd color. Um, let's see. How do we do problem A? Well, first let's see if our B is right or not. You better not TLE, I swear to God. How fast? Okay, that's fast enough. Got B. Um, 
I feel like we should probably just not spend that much time on A if we're that stuck on it, right? I'll read C. So there were N salesmen from number 1 to N, well, N cities. Visit every city exactly once in return to city 1. So for all I not equal to J, a flight from city I to J costs maximum of CI and the difference. There's no absolute value, interesting. Find the minimum cost. So a flight from city one to city, no, city, from one city to another, um, will incur a cost of, okay, so we'll incur some cost if we go from one city to another. The cost at every city is different though. But if we end up, but if we're at some city I, unless if it's a destination city, um, Wait, what is it? You want to visit every city exactly once. Okay, interesting. So we can rephrase this problem to like, you want to sort the, you want to sort each like city and so that you visit something in a certain order. I think that's how you do it. Let's read problem D really quickly. Every if a front value is to squat most of some subset of cards. I'll put negative one. Okay. So how do we rephrase this problem? We need to visit every city exactly once. So we're always going to incur a cost of CI no matter what we do. And we incur every cost of CI exactly once. So if we go to cities and decrease, wait a minute. If we go to cities by decreasing value of AJ, then, then it could work. I mean, that's like, that's like a potential strategy. Because no matter what, because we want to visit every city exactly once, we're going to, we can just sum up all C and then just ignore that, the constraint of C in the first place. That's if we go decreasing. But there's also a problem of like, if we jump up to a value, what would that value be? Because if we jump up by a certain value, right, because, actually no, we can't ignore C, because we might be allowed to make some higher transition so that we never need to use this cost in the first place. At least that's how it could, I think it could work. salesman to complete his trip. The minimum total cost of a salesman to complete his trip. Okay, so for some... Okay. Let's look at this example, or at least look at this one. Given A and C, okay, 
so AI and CI. So it's four, wait, so four, two, eight, four, three, zero, two, three, seven, one, zero, one. Okay. And then, okay, the min the lower bound on our answer is the sum of all ci. And we can reduce, but we can choose to not make this gap. Because if we, because we only, because aj minus ai is only positive if the city we go into is a higher ai value, or a higher a value. If we start it here, we go to some large city and make our way down, but we have to go back up. So we could go four. This is going to incur a cost of two. This incurs a cost of zero. But this means that we can go up. Do we ever want to go up to an integer that has that exceeds C? Like, that means if you increase up, I and mean, we would have to decrease down anyway. But if we decrease down to a point where we can cover 8, then it might work. So maybe it's like, what if we define these as ranges? where um, if a range so from AI to AJ so if it went from 4 to 6 well 4 to 6 but this only has a breadth of 2 right so it's like AI to AI plus C. So you get four to six, eight to twelve, three to three, two to two to five. 7 to 8, and this is from 0 to 1. So where can we find overlap? Because if we can find overlap, then we can travel among these without any extra cost. So if we have 1, 2, 3, 4, one, two, three, four, five, six. We have six locations. We can... Are these connected? These are not connected. Are these connected? Or do these overlap? They do not. Do these overlap? They do. One and four. Uh, four, six, seven, eight do not. Zero, one, four do not. Okay, so two... Okay, so 2 and 3, no, 2 and 4, no, 2 and 5, does inclusiveness count? Because, okay, if we go from here, yeah, I guess it counts, so 2 to 5, 2 to 5, not 2 to 3, 
two to five, not two to three, two to six, okay. Three to four has an edge. Three to four has an edge. Three to five does not have an edge. Three to six does not have an edge. Four to five does not have an edge. Four to six, no. Five to six, no. Okay, so then it's like one, four, three. We want to figure out, I mean, we start in the component of one, I guess, right? If we go four and then three, well, it might be better to take some extra distance so that we end up at four. sort in increasing can we model this as minimum maybe you could turn this into a problem of like the minimum number of extensions we need so that all of these intervals belong in the same connected component So then it's like we need one extra because we connect this to zero two, and then the highest bound that this connects to is six. And then from six to and then from six to eight, or I guess six to seven. Yeah, so then we get another plus one increase. We go up to eight, which then goes to eight, which then goes to twelve. And that's it. And that covers all of the intervals. Because we go 0 to 2, and then up to 5, no, and then up to 6, plus 1 can go up to 7, then 8 to 12. <sighs> CI is equal to 2 plus 4, that's 6. Well, 6, 9, 10, 11, 13. Is the answer for the second test case 13 for C? It is! Okay, I want to implement it. Um, so we have n, and then we have range, or range, or new range, and then, so class range, public and left, public and right, public range, and a and b, seconds. No, it's it's small enough. Okay, so we have an A and then C. New range A, A plus C. And then I'm just going to keep track of all the signs. 
on the sea. Oh, I guess. This. We want to sort these endpoints by some number. Or I guess maybe we do class unit where public in time and this is inclusive. These are inclusive ranges, so public um I was ten to nine. Two times ten to nine should be okay. So public boolean start public in ID. same time then we want because they're inclusive ranges we want to process we want to process um openings first so if start then return one or other to turn one we don't really care about tiebreakers um yeah Just a sum of this, yeah. Okay. Uh, oof. Keep track of these ranges. Um, and max is equal to, let's just say negative one, because it could technically go to zero. Um, so if new dot start, then we want to do this. to be an open unit. So if i plus 1 is less than ls dot size, then res is going to be equal to ls dot get i plus 1 dot time minus um 
that. Let's see. Okay, that's <laughs> blatantly not correct. Um, we're from A to A plus C. Oh, and active dot size is equal to zero. That's why. Eleven. Is there a Q? Okay, it's not that long. Oh, well, okay, hold on. P test 5, P test 10. Um, let's see, come on. Please no fail me. You're kidding me. York. I have a runtime error on pretest 14. Well, okay. <laughs> At least I know it's probably right. <laughs> what the hell? If I plus one is less than that list dot size and this. I'm just gonna write a stress tester. Um <laughs> that's so funny. Why? Oh. Um why why do you want to do this to me? Problem C. Um, we do an range, yeah, we want n, okay, oh wait, hold on, let me just do it like this, so we have a stress tester, um, we don't need b because of how, co of how intelligent it works, uh, is equal to 200 while p minus minus is equal to 0. So we do this. And n is equal to Do need long. Do we need longs? I mean, everything is at most 10 to the 19. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Case in which there's only two ranges. No? 
no. What? That is really weird. Um. Wild crew. Um, God dang it, dude. Runtime error pretest fourteen. What am I supposed to do about that? That's so annoying. And it's not even, the stress tester isn't even picking it up. U.ID. So this ID true, this ID false. It's a preset of integers. If you dot start active dot ID. Do I need to make these long? I, I don't think I do. Because with the left and then right, A and A plus C. Could this potentially be a long? Like this value over here? Like I, I just don't know. Um. Let's see, unit u ls dot get i. If I had to predict, it might be because doesn't contain you at ID then we throw out I want to use the I want to use a greater to debug this so if it doesn't contain this ID then there's a while crew loop and it should TLE if active dot contains you dot ID should I submit this Okay, sure, why not? Um, let's see. Because that could help me figure out why this is not right. Or like why it's um the ring of error. Okay, well they're equal to time like this. No, it's still a runtime error. Okay, so that can't be the reason why then. Um, right, right, left. I'm not. Okay. Yeah, it should be fine. Why is not? I don't get why this is not working. Um, some plus equal to C. Our IDs do the same. Um, preset integer active. Wait, what if they're always zero? Or, yeah, what if like they're all li literally the same range? No. 
what if they're all like 13 and zero? That is so weird. Um, collect chance off sword, reset. Long max. Maybe one now. Off that max. Long you get up time. Okay, well, if start is equal to gta.start, then we want to return this. Otherwise, if this is a starting point, then we want to return. Wait, wait. Yeah, we want to consider starting points first. So weird. Because it didn't throw a runtime error. So while this is less than LSS size, and after that size is equal to zero, we add ID, which is correct. Um, TIB. So T is the time in which it happened. Um, yeah. Long max is equal to this long press is equal to sum of C. Runtime error is not from removing from the active. What else could it be? Runtime error on pretest 14. Okay, so if there is still a unit left. is just an integer. This number will always exist because we've checked this. And active dot size is equal to zero. Collections dot sort. What could be wrong with this? Am I crazy or is there Maybe turn these into longs? I don't know. I want to turn them into longs. Um. Long. Otherwise, we return.
other reason? Why? Well, no. Why would it give a runtime error on such a weird test case? It was integer overflow? What the hell? I thought integer overflow was fine. I thought it wouldn't be an issue. Apparently not, okay. Well, that was a really dumb mistake. I thought it wouldn't in overflow. Apparently it does. I don't, that's weird. Why, wait, why would two times 10 to the, I mean, I guess it's close. I don't know. I, I have no idea. 1503A. Okay, now we just need to get A, pretty much. Um. God, that's weird. Why did it. Why did that not work? Okay, whatever. Let's, we need to figure out how to get A, and then we can think about D. Cause I, I already read D, um, so yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So if we have some way to balance this, okay, we know that the first the first characters of both of these have to be this second character has to be this. Okay, if they're all ones, then it's okay. If they're all zeros, then we would need to find a way to balance it out. Okay, because for every consecutive group of zeros, we would either have I mean, well, I guess we could have it all of one thing, one all of one of the other. That works as well, probably. Like one one o oh, one, that does not work. But one one o oh, o oh, one, does this work? Well, one one. Here, here. This has to be here. Okay. Interesting. And if I do this, then this can go over here. If I do this, this can go over here. <laughs> okay, so we have some prefix of ones, and then followed by. Some suffix of ones. If a number of ones in there is even, then it has to close up like this. Or actually, no, it doesn't. Oh, let's see.
occur. So those have to be assumed, those have to be assumed. It's obvious that um, this doesn't work, this doesn't work because of, we've shown that test case happen, we've shown that case to happen. assign um, some like number of ways to do it so let's say if z is a number of zeros in this array mm -hmm. that number of one type of array of one type of bracket you could have in both of them it's n minus z for here and then for the other type of bracket you would need exactly this many number. Okay, so a zero needs to correspond to an opening and a closing bracket. Is that it? Wait, okay, I think that's it. Um, let me try that. So it was like, for each, for each thing, we just alternate it. So int parity is equal to zero. Um, that might be it, that might be it. So, this is an n, i plus plus. So, res at 2 at, well, res at 1 at i is going to be equal to some, like, addition value, I guess, right? Because before we encounter the first zero, I mean, even if it's, like, a, a bunch of ones, Well, okay, yeah. So, n count is going to be equal to n minus 2 minus 1. n over 2 minus 1. Uh, and so if... Okay, so if count is greater than 0, then... Okay, well, we assume res at i 1 is equal to... So that's if it's equal to 0. In which case, we can't have any more of them. Otherwise, we can do this. for this test case. Yeah, because I know it just flip it over. Um, like, what work for this test case? Uh, if we have too many ones in a prefix, we can just pretty much, we can pretty much just ignore them. So like if you have a bunch of ones and a bunch of zeros, and so like a bunch of zeros as well. We want to we want to alternate how they flip. I think that's all we want to do. Wait, but is that not what my old code was doing, where if i mod 2 is equal to 0, then we do this. If i is equal to 1, then we do this, and if it's still equal, then we just flip it. So we just want to make it so it's the opposite of what it is. Res 1 is all obviously always balanced, res 2. necessarily work.
No, I don't think that works because. Or. the hardest problem. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. That's actually hilarious. A is this hard. Um to do a how to do a <laughs> how to do a let's see um okay what is random idea we have a prefix of ones Maybe we want the next bracket, so it might be possible to do it if it's like this. So this, this, this will correspond to this. This has to be an opening bracket. Um, this has to be a closing bracket. Here's an opening one. Closing, 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 closing. Oh, that would make sense. So we construct this. Okay, so I found a reason why my first, I found a case in which makes my first one incorrect, right? Yeah, because in here, we can set this to one, set this to zero, so we did this one, we add a one here, and then a zero, we have to do it in here. So the number of zeros, does it have to be, it's not super clear if the number of zeros has to be odd or not, or it has to be even or not, but we can just check the balances anyway, so it shouldn't really matter. Okay, so for, how would we expand this? It's like we do like a translation, I guess, where for every block, if it was one zero and then like one one. The way we could do this is, um, we can do, how do we, how do we write this? It's like for, if we have a one and then a zero, We want to alternate it as much as possible. Is that true? So we had one one zero one zero one. That's not true because we could do it like this, but it's also possible that we have a prefix and that ends up being too large. But no matter what we do, as long as we can alternate these, then this is this, 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 this 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 
Okay. We just need to find a valid bracket sequence. I, th I think I see. I think I, I think I get it now. Let's try it. And par is equal to zero. Okay, so if the pair, no, if a i is equal to zero, um, so if parity is equal to zero, then rent with one at i is going to be equal to this. Otherwise, it's going to be equal to this. And we want to flip the parity by one. So we do that. Um, and then we do int opening count is equal to zero. Or call it c in uh, array, I guess. Oh no, in regress at one. is equal to this, then opening count plus plus. Okay, so if the number of opening brackets is truly greater than n over 2, then it's obviously not possible. And so we do, um, I mean, wait, that should never happen anyway. Yeah, because I'm dumb. Ay, 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 ay. Because then we could do something like that. See if this works or not. Um, frick. <laughs> okay, hold on. That's definitely not true because I did it by hand and it worked. So that's okay. Did it? Yeah, yeah, it did. Um, otherwise, in par. equal to, oh, res1, there we go, res1, otherwise res1, 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 okay, weird, <laughs> that's weird, let me see res1, whoa, that's, that's really not correct, what the hell, Oh, 
and I'm dumb. If I was <laughs> increase it. That was pretty dumb. Okay. Um yes. Something that looks correct. Yes, something that looks correct. No. Dang it! Still wrong answer for just two. Come on. Why is A the hardest problem? Ugh. kidding me. Oh, you're kidding me. You are kidding me. I mean, well, it, do it doesn't matter anyway, though. Because the balance function is going to pick it out. But, eh, whatever. I don't know. some set of zeros where it's like instead of this we have something like this but then this is going to go outwards anyway What if we use a stack? So it's like, or not a stack, but um, like stack logic. Because we don't, the, these prefixes have to stay the same. Wait, maybe, maybe we need to consider the balance array. So, given like this integer array, we know that this balance has to be a, a, and then it's like, that means either is either a minus one or a plus one. So like whatever this value is, this has to be a different by value of two. first array has to be a valid bracket sequence. If we only change one of these digits, then it's going to guarantee to offset the balance. And, one, and the only way we can fix this balance is if we flip a parentheses of the opposite direction. And even then, it could potentially like create a negative balance at some point in this array. So the logic of like taking every other thing is, well, not every other thing, but like we do need to do this type of thing. 
maybe instead of like doing it every other time, we just do it um, every time. Does that make sense? So we can count zeros is equal to zero, or we can count some array, zeros plus equal to x or one, or zeros mod two is equal to zero. Okay. So if par is equal to zero, then we do this. Otherwise, we do this. Um, an opening bracket. Wait, that's that can't be true though. Offset it is if we do um oh one zero zero can't work for sure because if we have opening opening then we have a closing and a closing so for all the zeros that exist. Maybe we try both ways. I feel like that might be possible. Like, we just take what we did over here, right? Um, <laughs> and then we just like replicate it pretty much. So we do this. Um, and then we do everything in here exactly the same, except um, parity starts at one. Where we reset those three to zero, or opening bracket count. Starting parity is one. Um, do we start over here? Sure. Let's try it. Let's stop and rerun. Do A. What? <laughs> this is so weird. Um, come on. Maximum number of points I can get is 250. Is it, I guess it's worth, but I mean. Bro, what the hell? Do a value. Arrays dot fill. Right. Well, 
all okay, do these have to be alternating? I think the fact that they have to be alternating still holds true because um does it hold true? Yeah, because um you start if you think about starting off with a valid bracket sequence when you turn a digit on or like when you turn a digit off I guess like so you flip it it's going to affect the balance by two like a total balance because it turns a one to negative one or a negative one to one and we have to counteract that by getting another flip the bit and then making it like if a one change to a negative one, we need to change a negative one to a one somewhere. So this logic of like making sure we have an even number like this is correct. I just don't know how to do it. Oh wait, maybe it's this greedy. Hold on. That would kind of make sense if it was just greedy. Uh, I was going to write in here. <laughs> oh, let's see. So we can do a greedy or... We want to force brackets to be opening. I guess it's technically equal to one because the first character. Well, yeah, because the first character has to be um, because we've already checked to see if this is a. Or array n minus one is equal to zero. That's a little better. If the current balance is equal to this, then the result of zero is equal to an opening bracket. we can use this and use this equal to one. So if array at i, well okay, well if array at i is equal to one then we can pretty much make it whatever we want. greater than zero or an object is equal to zero. Okay, so if our balance is strictly greater than zero, well if our current balance is strictly greater than zero and um, what we use is less than this, otherwise we have to do or not used, but other used.
two. Let me check this one more time. <laughs> we got it. <laughs> I don't know why that I don't know why doing that made it work. It just did. That's so funny. <laughs> uh yikes. Yikes, yikes, yikes. That's that penalty is garbage. That's okay. Um problem D. We have 12 minutes on D. I don't think we can get it. Let me just make sure my I made everything to the long. Input itself was integer. So long, long, and then literally everything in here is a long. I even cast it to a long, which is excessive. Okay. B, okay, I, B should prop, B should be right. Um, okay, so we had, yeah, okay. <laughs> if you look at my submissions, um, Okay, wait, why are there hacks on C? That's kind of scary. But if you look at my submissions, I have every problem I solved is um, preceded by two wrong answers. So I had like two wrong answers and then ACB. I mean, then two runtime errors and then ACC and then two wrong answers on A and then I got A. So, <laughs> yeah. Bro, why is A literally the hardest problem out of the first three? I don't get it. That's funny. Um, uh, problem D. Do I think I know how to, I don't know if I can get it in this time or not. Or in decreasing order. And it's strictly decreasing, okay? Every number appears exactly once. Um, we could maybe think of it as like a graph. Because every pair like every card has a smaller number and a larger number on it so if we sort these cards in like by their largest number then we can check to see if like we can flip it around and then if it works then maybe it's fine i don't know that doesn't seem that doesn't seem legit I spent two hours solving A and like 20 minutes on C. That's so funny. Um, I, I, I can't get over to that. Okay, wait. Shoot, my computer's lagging. Uh, 15 4. So the order is what, so this order is already given, right? Deck is called sorted. Back values. Okay, put cards in any order you like. You must flip some subsets of cards. 
possibly none, then put all the cards in any order you like. Minimum number of cards we need. To sort, well, to sort the deck based on this arrangement. Okay. <laughs> hmm. Okay, who am I kidding? I'm not, I'm not getting 1D in 8 minutes left. I just spent too long in A. Although it seems kind of, I don't know, it's, because a good number of people have solved it. Oh, who the fuck? Okay, hold on, I have a call. Let me just...